Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Internet Marketing Revealed. My name is David Walker and today my guest is, well, me. Future episodes, I promise you, there will be far more interesting guests, but today I just wanted to introduce myself and to share some of my own backstory with you and also talk about why I've decided to create the show. So I think I'll do the reasons why I've decided to create the show first of all. Now, I've been involved in the online marketing industry for a very long time, and I've spoken to many people who are also involved in the industry. And what I found fascinating, and still find fascinating to this day, is the reasons that they give for getting involved in the online marketing industry in the first place. I always like to know what their big why is for wanting to improve their life, improve their situation from using the power of the internet. Now, I love to find out all of the different paths that they've walked on their journey, the things that they've tried, the things that they've succeeded with, and also the things that have failed dismally as well. It all makes for a very interesting conversation. And I wanted Internet Marketing Revealed to be a platform where these stories are shared. And that's from whether it's somebody who's very experienced in the industry and they've experienced huge successes. You know the type of people I'm talking about here, those people who are making multiple six figures, maybe even multiple seven figures a year solely from their online marketing efforts. But I'm also interested in finding out those stories from somebody who is brand new, perhaps somebody who's just taking their first tentative steps in the industry. Whatever side of the the scale that they're at, everybody has a story. Everybody has a reason for getting involved in this industry. And I believe that everybody's story deserves to be heard. So what I hope to gain from this show is real and fascinating insights into what is working and equally what isn't working in this industry right now from the very people who are doing this stuff day to day. And I'm sure that by uncovering these stories, we're also going to get lots of tips, advice, and actionable content from those stories being shared. So if you have a story that you'd like to share yourself, then please get in touch with me at www.internetmarketingrevealed.com and we can book in a slot. I really would love to hear from you, whether you're somebody who's been involved in the industry for a long time and you've experienced massive success, or if you're somebody who's just taken their first few steps in the industry, you might have only been involved for a matter of weeks or months, then whatever end of the scale that you're at, then please do get in touch with me. We can book in a slot and we can share your story. I really would love to hear from you. So what about my story? Well, I've been online for a very long time. I had my first internet connection back at home when I still lived with my parents way back in 1997. We had a dial-up connection, so it was painfully slow and it always hogged the phone line whenever you were using it. And I primarily used it in those days for the online chat rooms so I could be ignored by girls online just like I was in real life. So that was a lot of fun. (laughs) But it wasn't until the summer of 1998 where things really changed for me in terms of how I was going to use the internet for online marketing. So it was August in 1998. I was on holiday with my parents in Tenerife A couple of months prior to that, I'd actually had my first lads holiday with my friends. We went to Ibiza and had a a mad two weeks there. But uh, this was a more calm (laughs) holiday with my parents where nothing really much was happening. So one afternoon, I found myself sat on the patio 
of the apartment we were staying at and i was reading a pc magazine uh, of all things very rock and roll <laughs> i'm sure you'll think i must have been in the market for a new computer at the time because i'm not really that technical so i wouldn't have fully understood all of the stuff that was being talked about in the magazine but i was reading this magazine sat on the patio and it was a full page advert which caught my attention it was advertising a floppy disk if you can remember those which was full of these how to manuals these instructional manuals that you could print out and they'd give you advice on how to do various different things on how to make money from classified advertising or how to win competitions it, it was that sort of thing but what really caught my imagination then was the promise in this advert that i'd be able to keep 100 percent of the profits on any of these manuals that i'd sold and i thought to myself you know what i could make that work i could do that it was recommended in the advert that you'd sell these manuals in the classified advertising area of newspapers or magazines. But me being 18 years old, knowing everything there was to know about the world, I had a much better idea. I was going to sell these manuals online. I wasn't going to spend money paying for advertising in newspapers and magazines, which I imagined would be quite expensive and would quite probably eat up any profits that I was going to make from selling these manuals. I was going to sell them online. Just to give you some context, back in 1998, when I had this grand idea, there wasn't any social media. There wasn't any PayPal, so it wasn't very easy to process payments online unless you had an expensive merchant account with credit card processing. There wasn't any YouTube. Amazon was still in its infancy. And in the UK, where I'm from, we didn't even have eBay. I think eBay had been launched in the USA a year or so prior to that. But in the UK, we still didn't have it. But despite all of those setbacks and all of those barriers to, to entry, if you will, I still managed to make sales. I used an auction website, which was based in the UK. It's long been forgotten. It's, it's no longer around anymore. But I listed the manuals for sale there. There was some decent traffic being attracted to that site, so I was able to make sales. I accepted cash in the post because I wasn't able to process sales online. And then I printed the manuals out and I posted them back to my customers. And that's how I did it. That's how I made my first few pounds online. I want to ask you the question, do you think it's bad that I can't remember my very first sale? Because when I hear online marketers being interviewed, that's one of the things that usually comes up. What was your first sale? Can you remember your first sale? Can you remember what it was like? What did it feel like to make your first few pounds or your first few dollars online? And I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I know it was in towards the end of, of 1998 at some point, And I know that I sold one of these manuals on, on this auction website. But can I remember which one? No. Can I remember for how much exactly? No. <laughs> but uh, all I do know was that these were my first few steps into that industry. And it got me excited. I knew at that point that there was money to be made online, even though... I'd done it in a fairly difficult way because it wasn't instant payment. I still had to wait for money to arrive in the post and and all that sort of thing. And it was only a few pounds, so I wasn't going to, to retire. <laughs> I was still in university at the time. I knew that uh, I'd probably still have to get a job after that. Uh, this wasn't going to be my path to riches. But I knew at that point that the internet, even though it was in its infancy in the UK, it was going to be here to stay and it was going to be a very powerful medium where there was potential to make money. So from there, things progressed. I started to sell compilation CDs on eBay when eBay eventually launched in the UK. I think that was 
perhaps 1999. So I was selling these compilation CDs, which a lot of sellers in the UK were doing as well. So these CDs, they contain things like ebooks, ringtones, graphics, all that sort of thing. They were just these, these CDs packed full of as much stuff as you could store on them. And what I would do is I would buy these different CDs when I saw that they'd been released by uh, various sellers. And then I compile a, a best of myself so that i always try to have the the best version of a cd that was available on the ebay marketplace and that was really good for a time i was making around 500 pounds a week which for a university student was some really good money i, I was also working part-time in a retail store then where i was earning probably something ridiculous like four pounds an hour or something like that so to earn 500 pounds a week which was especially where I live in South Wales, it, it's a, a legitimate living wage. <laughs> that was a, a really good early experience. But of course, these things don't always uh, last forever. And uh, I eventually tired of the, the eBay CD selling game because there was a lot of competition and you'd have uh, rival sellers reporting your listings, trying to get them closed down. So there was always this game of cat and mouse going on uh, in trying to make as many sales as you can before your, your listing got shut down. And eventually it became more trouble than it was worth. So then it was on to the next thing. So while I was doing all this, I was also learning how to build and rank websites, just very basic HTML websites, uh, nothing too fancy, none of the, the whole database driven websites, which uh, became the norm soon after that. These were just very basic things, but I, I learned how to do search engine optimization. And uh, as you can imagine, in those days, it was actually quite easy to rank websites, even for fairly competitive search terms. So that's what I was doing. And I was doing that around the same time I was getting into a bit of online gambling. And I found that uh, the online bookmakers in the UK were the early pioneers into the affiliate marketing industry. So I'd set up a website where I would advertise all of the bookmakers' latest offers, and those bookmakers would pay me a commission every time somebody signed up, opened an account, and placed a few bets. Some of these companies would even pay recurring commissions, where essentially I would get a cut or a percentage of that customer's gambling losses. <laughs> now, there are questions to be asked there about how ethical you think that is because if you're going to get paid essentially you want your customer to lose their bets you want them to lose money because that's how you're going to make money as an affiliate but that was the the setup with some of them and, and that was quite lucrative now because i was quite good at search engine optimization at the time i managed to rank that website at number four for a very competitive and highly lucrative keyword and when i saw the amount of traffic that was coming in and i could see that the commissions were starting to stack up day by day week by week i really thought that this was it i'd found the golden goose that was going to make me a millionaire i was still quite young at the time i would have been about 23 24 and I'd been doing online, the online stuff for a few years then, but I really thought I'd hit the jackpot at that point. But unfortunately, it didn't last. <laughs> unfortunately, Google changed their algorithm. And because I was completely dependent on search engine traffic, my page dropped off the first page of Google. I think it dropped down to about the 10th page or something like that. My traffic completely dried up. I wasn't making any more sales, any more signups, no more commissions. And whatever I did, I couldn't recover. I couldn't regain that position in the search engine. So I'm not sure exactly what happened to this day. But unfortunately, that dream then came to an end. And it was time to look for the next big thing, <laughs> which seems to be a, a bit of a recurring theme during my time online. But despite that, I did actually quit my job 
in 2006 to go full-time online. I was involved in a couple of other things at the time that were, were making sales, and I was actually making more money from my online efforts than I was in the day job. I was working as a, an IT advisor at the time, and I knew that at the time that I quit in May 2006, that I was only going to have another job for the next 12 months anyway. After that, the contract was going to run out and I knew that I'd be out of a job. So I took that decision in May 2006 to quit the job on my own terms and have a go at online marketing as a full-time occupation. So that was quite exciting at the time. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a, a long-term business or, or strategy in place at that time. I was very much a short-term marketer, always looking for my next sale, always looking for my next opportunity. But at that time, it, it was paying. I was making I was making money consistently. And I thought that even if something dries up or if something doesn't work anymore, I'll be in a position where I can find something else and I can replace that income. So I put my SEO skills to good use yet again, because I was involved in, in doing a lot of websites at that time, because I stumbled on the online streaming niche. Now, this was around 2007, and streaming online football matches or sports, it wasn't as common as it is now. You know, we're talking about 14 years ago. So what I did was I created a very simple ebook and all it did was linked to a few sites online which offered these streaming services. I wasn't doing any streaming myself or anything like that. I wouldn't have had the technology or or the know-how how to do anything like that. But I what I did know how to do was to create an ebook and I knew how to create a simple website to sell that ebook and I knew how to rank that website in Google. So that's what I did. I, I created this very simple website to, to sell this very simple product and it got absolutely flooded with traffic. Thousands of organic visitors from Google were hitting my website every single week. I was selling this low ticket ebook. It was only costing the customer a few dollars at the time. I, I think I sold this on, on ClickBank and I was making around 2000 well, £2,000 a week in the UK, doing very little to earn that money. I, I wasn't doing much in the way of, of work at all. I might have been creating or writing a few articles every week just to help a little bit with the overall ranking of the website. But I wasn't putting a lot of work into it con compared to the, the money that was being made. And to this day, I still think that was the, the easiest money that I've ever made online. I really don't think... I'm going to see anything like that again, especially not from free organic Google search engine traffic. But like everything, all good things come to an end. It didn't last. Google changed their algorithm again. Things tightened up. And it wasn't as easy then to, to game the search engines to get things ranked. And I wasn't getting as much traffic. And a £2,000 week became a 200 pound week pretty much overnight so again i'm in that position where you think right you got to think of something else now what's your next move going to be if i can share my biggest mistake as well from that period when i had that streaming website i wasn't building an email list which is absolutely crazy now i think about it just think about it yourself. I was getting thousands of low ticket buyers every single week hitting my website and buying my product. If I'd got those customers onto an email list, then I would have been able to promote relevant products to them over and over again. I could have even sent them to my online betting affiliate site, which was now being completely ignored by Google. And no doubt I would have got a lot more signups from that. And that would have been another very lucrative income stream for me. But hey, hindsight is a wonderful thing. So by now it's 2009. 
and I'm looking for my next move. I'm staring down the barrel of my 30th birthday. I'm still earning a full-time income online, but I know at this point I need to make something work for me or all of the income that I've been making online is going to dry up. So that's when I entered the internet marketing or the make money online niche for the first time. At this point, I had vast experience online. I'd been online for about 10 years at this point. I'd had success in other niches, online gambling, the, the streaming niche. I, I knew how to rank websites. I knew how to, to get lots of search engine traffic. But entering this niche, I was starting from zero. So I did what everybody else who enters that niche tries to do. They try to get noticed. So I started writing blogs. I started posting on forums within the industry, trying to share some, some tips and expertise. And I also went to internet marketing events to meet fellow marketers face to face. It was around then I started to create and launch my own info products. I had experience of doing that before in other niches, writing eBooks, writing reports, creating instructional videos, all of that kind of thing wasn't new to me. It, it didn't phase me. I was able to do that. But even though I could do all of this stuff, I found that it was harder to make money in the online marketing industry. Ironically, it was more difficult to make money in the make money online niche than it was in the other niches that I'd had uh, a fair bit of experience in and enjoyed some success in before. I found that in the online marketing industry, it's more about who you know, rather than what you know. Because to make sales in this industry, you're usually relying on JV partners, affiliate partners, people who've been involved in the industry for a lot longer than you, who have built up these large, responsive, email buyer lists, you're relying on them to mail their lists to promote your product. That's how you're going to make sales. You're not going to make sales from organic search engine traffic, which is what I've been used to in the past. But I made it work. I did what I've always done. I stuck at it and I made it work. One of my biggest high points, I suppose, during my time in the internet marketing industry was when I launched a coaching program off the back of one of the info products that I'd released. And I went on to make about 10,000, I'm going to say $10,000 rather than 10,000 pounds. I think it was $10,000 because my customers were based in the US. So it was $10,000 in about 48 hours, which was crazy. I'd made a lot of money before in other niches, but I'd never made as much as that, as quickly as that uh, in, in any uh, industry before. Unfortunately, it wasn't something that was sustainable. That was something of a one-off, but it did open my eyes at the time to what was possible in this industry if you had the right product and the right audience and people saw you as that that credible authority figure in the industry who was able to to solve their problems so when that happened i thought you know what i can i can take this on i can really make this work i can become that established person in the internet marketing industry now but again and i, I think you know what's coming now it didn't last i found working in the the internet marketing industry the make money online side of things a grind you're always in that cycle of having to create products launch products find jv partners hope that they mail out and then hope that people buy the product and if any of those steps along the way fail then you're going to have a failed launch you're not going to make any money and all of the time and effort that you've put into creating this new product ready to launch, which could be anything from, you know, four, six or eight weeks. And not making it make any money at the end of that when you've got bills to pay, because remember, I'm, I'm still earning 
a full-time income online at this point or, or relying on a full-time income from my online activities to make sure that the bills were paid. And I just found it really difficult. It was a, a constant grind. Things were always changing in the industry as well. And I'll be honest, I did find it difficult to keep up with the changes in the industry. And after two years of what was a, a slow decline overall, where I didn't really have an established business at that point, I was still very much in that same cycle of trying to get that short term sales, those quick wins, just to try to get get enough money in each month just to make sure the bills were being paid. So I'd had about two years of that at this point. I was just throwing mud against the wall, hoping that some of it would stick. I, I was involved then in different areas of the online marketing industry as well at that point, just trying anything just to, to keep the money coming in. But by June 2014, everything came to a head and I ran out of money, basically. I could no, I was no longer making enough money from my online marketing efforts to pay the bills and I ran out. And I had no choice then but to return to a day job. At this point, I was 34 years old. I'd spent the last eight years of my life working for myself in an industry which people outside of the industry don't know it exists and let alone understand what it's all about. So as you can imagine, my my job prospects were very poor at this point. From an employer's point of view, I probably didn't have much to offer because all of my experience was in an industry that they didn't really understand or didn't really value. So I ended up working for an insurance company where I was selling car insurance over the phone. I was really grateful for the job at the time. Don't get me wrong, it got me out of a very difficult situation and it meant ultimately that we kept a roof over our heads. So for that reason alone, I'll always be grateful for that opportunity. But it was a difficult job. I was working really long hours. I was out of the house for about 13 hours a day uh, I wasn't seeing my son during the during the week at all, pretty much, because I was a a home a, a stay at home dad from the time that he was born. So by the time I went back to this day job, he was only about three. So he was only just starting school at the time the the nursery school. So I'd see him for maybe an hour in the morning, take him to school, and then by the time I got home in the evening, it was about ten o'clock or so in the evening. And he'd have been in bed for hours, so I wasn't really seeing him uh, during the week. So I think that was was a bit strange for uh, for the two of us. And because I was spending so much time at the day job, I found that I didn't have any time to work on my own stuff, to work on anything related to online marketing. I didn't really mind to begin with because... I was not only so grateful to have this job, which meant that the bills were getting paid at the end of every month without me having to stress out and uh, lose sleep all month trying to, to think of something to, to pay these bills. But I was also of the opinion that, look, you couldn't make this work when you were trying to do it full time. So why on earth would you now try to make it work when you've got very limited time during the week because all of the, the rest of your time is being spent at the day job and the spare time that you've got now, you need to be spending that, that with your family because you're not really seeing them during the week. So I just tried to, to carry on like that. Now, I, I was unhappy. I know now looking back, I, I was really unhappy with the situation because you do feel trapped. You feel stuck in this situation because you know you have these these other obligations and commitments. The bills need to get paid. You need to keep a roof over your head. You need to be able to put food on the table. But you're doing it and you're really, really unhappy in the process. <laughs> and at that time, I, I didn't think there was a way out. I felt 
really trapped, but I thought this is this is now my life and you have to try to make the best of it. So I did. I did try to put the online marketing side of things out of my mind completely. I tried to crack on with the job. I was doing quite well. I was always one of the one of the top sellers on the sales floor, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I was finding it difficult and it wasn't helped that the job was getting worse. The, uh, the hours that they were uh, imposing on us were becoming less favorable. We had to do more weekends from not doing any weekends when I first started. And it, it just wasn't really, it really wasn't a, a good fit for, for living family life. So I needed to try and find a way out. So I started looking for, for other jobs. Unfortunately, I was offered a work from home position with another company and I quit. I went in on a Sunday because we had to work weekends at that point. It was a bank holiday Sunday as well, of all things, which made it even worse, uh, which was towards the end of May here in the UK. I, I went in in the morning. I just told them I was quitting. They told me I couldn't and I just walked out. So I didn't leave on the best of terms, but that day we had a, a cracking day. We went to the, the seaside here in South Wales. Brilliant day and, and one I'll, I will remember probably forever because of the, the circumstances which surrounded it. But uh, I've been doing that work from home job ever since. And uh, it gives me a lot more freedom now to, to work on uh, lots of other online marketing. I didn't actually return to online marketing immediately. I thought I was going to, that was going to be the plan. I, I thought, right, look, you're working from home again now. Now you're gonna have more time to really crack on with things and and try to, to make your mark in this, this online industry again. But I didn't do that straight away. I actually spent around two years just doing this new work from home job without really getting involved in online marketing at all. I, I think that working for the insurance company must have, must have taken a, a bigger toll on me than I'd first appreciated. And I just enjoyed being back at home again, relaxed, working the job, getting the bills paid, going on holiday, all of that kind of thing without the additional pressures and, and deadlines of, of having to do lots of different things in the online marketing industry. So I did take about two years out before that creative itch started uh, started to get my attention again. Now, I like to think of myself as quite a creative person overall. Marketing has always been my creative release. You know, I'm, I can't play guitar, I can't sing, <laughs> but I can write, I can create videos, I can create audio. This is my creativity, my creative release, and, and marketing has always been that outlet for me. And I think after two years at home and probably another couple of years when I was working for the insurance company, I'd missed it. And the time felt right then that I was gonna make a return. So I needed a platform. I looked into a couple of different social media platforms at the time to try to relaunch myself as such because social media, you have that ready-made audience there for you. I had a, a little go at Instagram but soon realized that I wasn't really good looking enough to, <laughs> to make any kind of impact on that. So that's why I decided on Facebook. I thought it ticked a lot of boxes for me. You get some pretty good organic reach. If you publish content on your profile, you're able to produce all different types of content, whether it's written content, whether it's photos, whether it's videos, and you're not tied to one particular type of content say like you are with instagram which is which is very visual rather than written content and it was also great for networking as well it's really easy on facebook to find people who are in your particular niche and you can connect with them on the messenger and that's all all very easy to do so that's why i i decided uh, to focus my attention on facebook at that time now, despite my years of experience by now, I was starting over again. Nothing new to me, I've, I've done it before. When I made the decision to come back, I said to myself that I'm only going to do things that I enjoy. And if I can give anybody any advice 
who's thinking about getting into the online marketing industry, then that would be it. Only do things that you enjoy because you're not going to get success straight away. And there are going to be long periods where you feel like quitting because you feel like you're not getting any traction. You feel like nobody's listening to you. Nobody's interacting with you. Nobody's buying from you. But if you're passionate about the marketing that you're doing, then that's going to push you through those difficult times until you reach that tipping point where you start to see some level of success. Now, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then you're not going to get to that point. You're going to quit far before you reach that tipping point where you start to see success. So if I can give anybody any advice at all, it is only do what you enjoy when it comes to online marketing. And I'm really glad that I took my advice there because I was enjoying the content that I was creating. It started to get noticed. I started getting traction. I started to make affiliate sales from this organic social media traffic. And I then went on to create my own training program around what I was doing online. So I created this nine and a half hour video training program where I reveal everything I know about organic social media marketing. And I'm really glad that I did that. It it was received quite well. I made some sales and I think it positions me as one of the more credible figures within that side of the online marketing industry. So that was a really great experience. And uh, I know that that training has, has helped a lot of people. Even though I created my own training program, I still felt like I could be doing more. I've been involved in this industry for a very long time now, decades, in fact. And I now want to expand into different platforms. I want to put my content in front of different audiences, new audiences, not just an audience in one section of the online marketing industry who use one social media platform. And I thought that creating the internet marketing revealed show would be the best way for me to do that. So that's pretty much where we are today. That's been my story so far. So I hope that you've enjoyed listening to it and that you're going to join me on the next episode for more great stories, more tips and advice from people who have amazing things to share. My name is David Walker and this is Internet Marketing Revealed. Please visit internetmarketingrevealed.com and davidwalker.net for more free content. If you need a domain name for your business, visit domainsrevealed.com where you'll find more than 1,000 premium domains. And finally, please rate and review this podcast. Thank you again for listening and I'll see you on the next episode.